is ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories around the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello there and welcome to Core TV News at 7. I am Frank Omalape and here are some of the stories we're filing at this time. Many people were reported dead after three explosions rocked the popular Gumbi Line Transport Services Limited in Gumbi State. According to police and eyewitness, the explosions were reported to have occurred about 9.30 a.m. Friday. The three bombs which were said to be concealing bags went off during the morning rush hour. Police blamed the latest in series of attacks targeting commuters on Boko Haram. Area Police Chief Abdullahi Kudu says the command is still working on the death toll. An employer of the state-run bus park, Lawati Aliyu, and other witnesses say three men left bags parked with explosives in exploded buses. Adamawa State Governor Balangelari says the security situation in the state has elicited concern. He called for understanding from the people of the state, adding that the government is doing all in its power to control the situation. I appeal to our people for understanding and uh, to say that matter of security is everybody's concern, not only for government, it is our collective responsibility. So we should be up and doing, we should be our brother keep us any information that would assist the security operatives to stem this uh, insecurity uh, should be passed to the necessary authorities. He added that arrangements have already been in place to take care of the needs of the affected persons. We, of course, we have some material in our stores right now, and but we will have to ask for more. We have to seek assistance, we have to seek assistance with the security agencies and those who are in charge of this to ensure the uh, so called reaches these people as well. The wise stakeholders for Mobi area address journalists uh, and the security situation, stating that Boko Haram insurgents have taken over strategic places in once vibrant commercial city. The case of Mobi reached its peak, its optimum yesterday, when the insurgents penetrated Mobi finally and decided to unleash their mayhem on our people, burning and uh, looting and uh, they burned down uh, shops up to close to a very uh, 100 number of shops in the market and uh, they took over strategic areas in the town and uh, seeing this our people felt they were not secure and decided to uh, you know leave their homes to flee they called for urgent steps in assisting those who fled to neighboring Cameroon Republic. Uh, we have also appealed to him to diplomatically take up the issue of our brothers who have crossed into the Cameroonian territory. Well, reports reaching us indicate that uh, they are not finding things easy uh, in those places uh, because uh, the, the thing happened suddenly without any arrangement and when you see people massively moving into your area, you get apprehensive. And uh, I think we have been very good. Our relationship with our Cameroonian brothers have been very good. After all, we, we find ourselves across the border. We are all one people. So we still appeal to our brothers on the other side of the divide to really be sympathetic towards the cause of our people and accept them and facilitate their movement. Those who want to move uh, through their places should be assisted. 
The abduction of the Chiba school girls has run into 200-day mark. In Lagos, the Women Arise and Etage Initiative stages a rally uh, to express displeasure at the failure so far by the federal government to secure the release of the girls. Our correspondent Anita Fataji was there and brought back this report. <laughs> The president of Women Arise and Campaign for Democracy, Joe O.K. Odumakin, says the federal government should step up efforts at securing the release of the girls. 200 days after, our hearts still grieves. It's terribly worrisome. It's disheartening. It's heartbreaking that for 200 days, our girls are still with the terrorists. And that is why our gathering here is to prove a point. And what is that point? That point is that government must be more responsible and responsive. Government must fulfill its constitutional responsibilities in making sure that our guests are rescued. Others who spoke at the rally says the issue should be treated with more urgency by the government. The rally also says all Nigerians should unite against terror and insurgency, irrespective of religion and creed. Anita Fatunji, Core TV News, Lagos. The Speaker of the House of Assembly, Amenu Tambo, has challenged the powers of the police authorities to court to recall his old list. He personally led his lawyers to the Federal High Court to file the court's papers on behalf of himself and the All Progressive Congress. The defendants are the People's Democratic Party, the House of Representatives, INIC, and the federal government. Tambo are the client comments, but spokesman of the House of Representatives, I, I mean, Zachary he's Muhammad, still the Speaker of uh, Nigerian Parliament. Have no business uh, for all interpreting constitutional provisions. As an arm of government, definitely we must look at it. Uh, with, with uh, a lot of uh, uh, concern and uh, the era of we're not running a banana republic uh, it's, it's Nigeria uh, this country belongs to all of us there are spelled out rules by which you can carry out any uh, uh, activity um, and of course he is the speaker of Nigerian parliament we don't have any other speaker and for us as an institution we're looking at it quite uh, uh, with a lot of sadness because there are three arms of government, you know, and no one affects the other. Uh, if the police want to take the issue of interpretation in their hands, then that's very unfortunate. Even if the police will act, they must wait on a judgment of a competent court. And, of course, the police is interpreting. They're taking over the issue, the, 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 the function of the judiciary. Yeah, that's our concern. Former city minister Nasir El Rafai says the decisions to recall security details attached to the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Aminu Tambuel, is an infringement on his constitutional rights. The chieftain of the Progressive Congress accused the government and the police of impunity. He also argued that any individual or group aggrieved by the Speaker's defection to the APC should go to court rather than resort to self-help. Well, it's, it's a continuation of the federal government's impunity. Uh, right Honorable uh, Amin Waziri Tambwal is still the Speaker of the House. He's entitled to all the protection that the fourth citizen of Nigeria deserves. And uh, it is sad and unfortunate that the police has become the, an arm of the PDP. Uh, in this battle. It is unfortunate as uncondemnable and I hope that they will retrace their steps and restore his security because if anything happens to him, we will hold President Jonathan, the Minister of Police Affairs, the Inspector General of Police and the Nigerian Police responsible. 
the chairman of the PDP governor's firm, God's Will Akpabio, says Aminu Tambua has no reason to stay a day longer in the position of Speaker of the House of Representatives uh, after his defection. He also can insisted that the Speaker's movement to the All Progressive Congress will have no effect on the ruling party. Governor Akpabio spoke on the sidelines of President Jonathan to the PDP Secretariat in Abuja. The PDP never lost any Speaker of the House of Representatives. The Speaker of the House of Representatives had exhibited, in, I mean, seat had always been vacant and empty in all PDP activities. So I have not seen where we lost any. Yeah, yeah, I've never, have you ever seen him in any P PDP function before? Have you ever seen him? So how can we say we lost? A man who has always been P uh, uh, APC in his side, he has always been in the opposition. So I don't see, we, there's no single loss. He has just now formally made an announcement. And that is why we are calling on him as an honor member and a good man who knows the meaning of democracy and the meaning of the rule of law to do the re reality. No, it shows that the speaker himself knows what it means. He knows what it means. The international community is watching him and watching the opposition, whether they will advise him rightly and whether he will do the needful. I'm not, I'm, I have no doubt in my mind that the speaker of the House of Representatives, knowing the constitutional provision of the government and defection without crisis, knows the right thing to do since he came on the platform of the PDP. This is different from governors. This one is constitutionally provided. It is within, it's part of the rule of law. So I'm very, I'm happy that he knows the right thing to do. I will not urge him, but he knows the right thing to do. I will not prompt him, but he knows the right thing to do. I look forward to seeing the, the announcement very soon, that yes, indeed, in, in view of the fact that I have jumped ship, I want to relinquish my yep. position and then hand over to the party that gave me the opportunity to be a member of the House of Reps. Thank you. You're still watching Call TV News at 7. We'll take a break now. We'll be back for more. Stay with us. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce someone special here tonight whose understanding, knowledge, and support has truly made our juice company prosper. I wonder what goes into making this. You'd be amazed. It often starts from the farm, where fresh fruits are grown and carefully sorted, and straight on to the factory, where they are pressed, processed, and packaged. Then off they go again, this time to large distributors like you, and retail shops, where people buy and pay with ease. You seem to know quite a lot about this. You work for the juice company then? I suppose I do. Please join me in welcoming our business banking service partner, Stambik IBTC Bank, to partnerships that move us forward. Stambik IBTC Bank, moving forward. Glad to have you back now. For more information on our news and other programs, visit our Facebook page. It's facebook.com forward slash OTV News. And our Twitter handle at OTV News. You can also log on to www.youtube.com forward slash OTV Living Space and News. A federal high court in Abuja has fixed Tuesday, November 4, for the arraignment of Coca Cola Nigeria Limited, Nigeria Bottling Company Limited, and the managing directors for alleged violation of the Consumer Protection Council Act. This is in response to charges filed by the Attorney General of the Federation, Mohamed Adoke, against the accused before Justice Ebo Chuku. The global soft drink giant and its franchise holders in Nigeria to be tried for allegedly violating the orders of the Consumer Protection Council on Safety Standard. If found guilty, the chief executive officers of the two companies risk a jail term and ranging from three to five years. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has arraigned the Director General of the International Institute of Tropical Agriculture Ben Jamin Ogumbodidi and three others on a 17 count charge of conspiracy, misappropriation, and diversion of 150 million naira. Ogumbodidi and three other accused persons, Zakio Stejumola Adinoche Clement and Jaliku Umitoju, were arraigned before the Federal High Court in Ibado, on your state. The arraignment is based on a petition from the academic staff of the Institute who alleged that the Director General falsely claimed to have spent the amount on hazard allowances for its members in December 2013. They also alleged that he claimed to have used 15 million to harvest crops 
when he only spent 800,000 naira. When the charges were read to them, all accused persons pleaded not guilty. Justice Harry Emanuel adjourned the matter till November 11, 2014, for hearing and remanded all the accused persons in Agode Prison in Ibadan. And I wait from that now. The election petition tribunal hearing the petition of the People's Democratic Party in its candidate in August 9th governorship election, challenging the victory of Rauf Areguesola of the All Progressive Congress in Oshun State, resumed sitting amidst tight security in Oshogo. Our correspondent Rashid Rashid was there and now reports. As a measure against an invasion of the courts witnessed in Adoikiti a few weeks back, the venue of the tribunal sitting in Oshobo was characterized by heavy security presence. While delivering her speech, the newly constituted panel chairman, Elizabeth Ibejime, solicited the cooperation of all stakeholders and admonished the press not to sensationalize issues. Counsel to petitioners and respondents while arguing the case agreed that an earlier application brought forward by counsel to the petitioner, Iola Omishiri, praying the tribunal to grant Omishiri the right to inspect INEC materials with or without the respondents be set aside, having been overtaken by events. Give you an order that parties should be allowed to inspect the electoral materials used for the election. So, uh, somehow along the line there were some problems, but that problem has been solved, so there was no basis of continuing with that motion. And the court said, the other still remains, and then I next said, we are ready to cooperate with you to allow you access to the electoral materials, so there was no basis for that motion, and that was how it was struck out. But the only ruling they gave has to do with uh, motions which were withdrawn because they are no longer necessary. On the issue of competence of the tribunal and its jurisdiction over the petition, PDP counsel prayed the court to treat the matter alongside a substantive petition, while counsel to the APC says the issue are different and should be treated accordingly. There are some procedural errors that affected the jurisdiction or competency of the petition. And then we said by the new act, we're supposed to, the, the tribunal can hear all of them together because of the time, so that they can decide them at the end of the day, both the objection and then the substantive petition. The ruling in respect of how to proceed, you see, forward in this uh, matter, in other words, uh, how do we hear these applications? Do we hear them now or adjourn them till later? We made that point very clear. We, we, we have made an, a point that, look, the issue of competence is jurisdictional matter and that the tribunal should take it. The other side has argued that, no, let us take it together with the hearing. The councils, however, express optimism of a well-secured and conducted tribunal with Ruti Miyakere Dulu comparing it to what he says is the equity experience. What is important here is that uh, we have come out and there is freedom. We, we, we are not under any security threat here. Uh, the tribunal there composed of gentlemen too, but the problem in Ekiti was the incursion of the venue by uh, multiple touts and thugs. That's what was the problem in Ekiti, not, not the tribunal. The panel, which has Elizabeth Ibejime as chairman with Vincent Ofesi and Aye Kutigi as members, however, differs its ruling on the subject of jurisdiction and competence to the 3rd of November 2014. Rashid Rashid, or TV News, Oshobu. The Independent National Electoral Commission is considering the use of an electronic card reader for the 2015 general elections. INEC Chairman Atahiru Jega says the technology will be test run during the by-elections in preparation for its deployment next year. He added that the card reader will be used to confirm if the fingerprint and picture correspond with the name and voter's card. I, I would like to say that we've taken a decision at the Commission that now that all the major governorship elections are behind us, any subsequent uh, by-election between now and 2015 general elections, we are going to pilot the card readers in the field, again to help us uh, really test these card readers uh, and uh, keep on improving if there are challenges before we now use them for the 2015 general elections. 
the hard copies of the registers which we've been using for all elections will also be there, you know, and so it's really a backup. But the decision of whether if you are verified electronically or if you are not verified, you can't vote, that's a decision we have to take together with political parties and other stakeholders. You're still watching Call TV News at 7. We'll take another break now. Be back with more stories outside Nigeria. Stay with us. You can now watch Call TV News live from anywhere in the world on our website, www.calltvnews.com. Click on Live TV on our website and watch us live. And welcome to Call TV Primetime News. To follow us on Twitter, click on Twitter icon on our website. And Facebook, click on the Facebook and YouTube to see all our previous news production. You can also watch us live on YouTube. Click Call TV, leave a space, then news. Call TV News, a 24-hour news station. And outside Nigeria now, Burkina Faso President Lezé Kompaori has imposed a state of emergency in his country in a bit to end violence protests against his 27-year-old rule. He also has dissolved the government. But in spite of all the measures, violent protests aimed at ending haste, 27-year rule still continue with the parliament building backed by protesters who also run Sac State Television. Protesters have converged on the main square in the capital of Gadogo, demanding the immediate resignation of Kampare, who has been in power since 1987 coup and has won four disputed elections since. Witnesses say one person was killed during the protest. As protesters converged on the presidential villa with soldiers freeing bullets to disperse the crowd. Soldiers are also said to have joined the protest and are believed to be led by a former defense minister, uh, Kwame Logue. UN Secretary General Ban Ki moons special envoy to West Africa, Mohamed Ibn Chambers, will fly to Burkina Faso on Friday to try to resolve the crisis. Well, and that's a wrap on Court TV News at 7. Many thanks for watching. Don't forget, join us at 9.45 for a primetime bulletin. I am Frank Omalape. I'll see you again.